it's no secret that the tech market is more competitive than it's been in maybe the past decade. And specifically in the cloud space, I'm seeing more entry-level, associate-level roles requiring skills that potentially weren't required before. Let's just take a look at LinkedIn jobs to see what I'm talking about. So I've typed in cloud engineer. New York is my area, so I'm putting in New York. And the first one that comes up is this engineer in cloud technologies. And what instantly caught my attention is this one's asking for .NET, which I think is pretty interesting. Let's scroll down and stick to the ones that say cloud engineer. So let's just like click on this one. And here we are looking at, yep, right here, work with Python, right? And again, I'm going to try to stick to just the ones that say specifically cloud engineer. And let's go to, yeah, let's see. This is another issue with these postings is it's like cloud developer, data engineer, when you type in cloud engineer. But uh, let's see. We'll scroll. We'll find something. Cloud operations engineer. Maybe this one here. This one is asking for bash, go, JavaScript, Python. <laughs> uh, so experience with one, read and write. And willingness, the willingness to learn more. Interesting. All right. So anyway, you you get my my what I'm trying to get at is programming. Programming is becoming a skill that you just can't avoid. I tell people now that if you want to get into cloud engineering but you don't want to code, this is not the career for you. But don't be scared. Today we're gonna break down how you can actually learn the programming skill set so you can apply to these jobs. But then I'll also give you a couple of tips. If you want to level up your programming skills and potentially become like a full on cloud developer or maybe like a software engineer or something like that. All right. With all that being said, welcome. My name is GPS. I do cloud things at Microsoft and here on YouTube. And let's dive right into the video. I love explaining things through diagrams and I have a bunch of cloud diagrams that you can purchase if you'd like. I've whipped up a diagram to explain this uh, beginner's guide for cloud programming and uh, you can also purchase this or if you don't want to i completely understand you can just watch this video all the content will be there uh, for you as well but if you do want to purchase it i 100 thank you and i am so grateful all that money i put back into the channel and it's the reason why i don't have sponsors uh because of support for uh that i get from all of you also members of the channel thank you so much to all i think i have like about 15 members now thank you all you all have access to diagrams for free, so be sure to check the community post and you'll have a link there and a code there for you. So we have kind of three areas that I think beginners should primarily focus on. And like I mentioned, there's going to be a level up to all of these areas and some additional areas as well. But let's just focus on, you know, you're potentially at this zero land here and you want to get hired, right? You want to end up in being able to start and apply for roles. Totally understand that. So we're going to start in this area and we have our basics, we have our APIs and we have our cloud services. So in our basics, it's really like the basics of programming. Side note, which language you should pick? Honestly, I think you should go between Python and Go. Look, I love .NET. I use .NET as much as possible. It's the, the, the language that I learned when I was in a sysadmin and it's given me a bunch of opportunities since then but I just see more popularity with Python and Go and check your market. I, potentially you'll see some .NET or some other language, then go for that. Maybe you'll see Java, um, but Python or Go is, seems to be the most popular. So I would pick one of those. All right. I don't have really any recommended resources for Go, uh, for, but for Python, if you go to learn to cloud.guide and you go to the programming phase, there are a bunch of books that I recommend for Python. Back to this step, the basic step. This is all your, your basic stuff with, uh, you know, programming. Variables, loops, basic data structures, input output, working with files, version control, rejects. And again, you don't have to get into, because these specific skills can get as complex as they need to get. But for this step, for the basics, just high level stuff. And then I have a project idea at each step as well. So the project idea for your basics, again, getting hands-on is crucial, is to develop a console application that reads movie data from a locally stored CSV. So maybe you can find a CSV online or you can use, I don't know, ChatGPT or Bing or one of these AI assistants to generate a CSV for you. 
And then you're going to use a menu so users can interact with the data. So it's going to be a console application. I wouldn't focus too much on UI, and that's sort of a different section of software engineering. You can if you want to, but I wouldn't spend too much time on it unless you really want to. So you have a little console application and it prints uh, type one to search movie by name, type two to search movie by release year, type three to search movie by director. Then the user types in all of these and then you have to use that information to work through your data and return the data that the user is requesting. Pretty simple, right? Now, I also have a section here that all projects should have. Absolutely need to have a GitHub repo a GitHub README, and then obviously since you're using GitHub and Git, you'll have version control. CICD and infrastructure as code more belong to the next step, so we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Okay, and then we'll talk more about these extra credits. But first, in your basics, as soon as that project is done, GitHub repo, make sure it's got a README, and then make sure you understand the basics of version control, okay? Awesome. Also, these projects build on each other. So you can plug any idea, but the reason I sort of outlined it this way is so you can build on your skills, which I think it makes things easier to understand, to work through, and the momentum helps you like stick with things. So that's why I did it this way. Next, we're going to work with APIs. You're going to work with APIs a lot, a lot. <laughs> so that's why I've tried to introduce it early on. So your skills here to develop, making HTTP requests, parsing JSON data, and then handling any errors that you potentially could encounter while working with these APIs. So the focus here is for you to learn how to work with APIs that exist already, not necessarily create your own. And the project idea here is to improve the project you built in the basic step. So again, you built a console application that works with a locally stored CSV, right? Your goal for the API section is to maybe similar functionality, but instead of working with a local CSV, go and find a movie API that's available online. There's a bunch of them. And you could, of course, plug in a different idea. Maybe you want like music albums. Maybe you want, I don't know, Pokemon. Maybe you want like book quotes. It could be whatever it is. Uh, but I would say try to stick with it from here to this one and then to the following project. All right. Okay. Third step here, cloud services. Again, I'm trying to keep it as high level to get just the bare minimum that you need to start applying for these roles. But honestly, every area here has endless potential for you to do more. But let's dive into the cloud services step. Store files in cloud storage. So instead of storing stuff locally, be able to use something like blob storage or S3. Uh, create cloud services with SDKs. Uh, be able to create like um, these, these storage accounts that we just mentioned with code. Uh, or like the next point here is serverless functions. Cre create the actual infrastructure for your function functions with SDKs. Authenticate with connection strings and service principles. So what does this mean? When you're working locally, you know, you're developing, maybe you use VS Code or something, in order to connect with your storage account from your code or to any kind of service you have in the cloud, you're going to need to have a connection string or, or better yet, a service principle. So you're going to learn how to use that in this step here. And I would say here, this final point, the basic use of a cloud NoSQL database. I'm not diving too deep into SQL queries at this step because that is a whole other discipline on its own, but being able to store information, obviously text information into a NoSQL database, I think is pretty crucial to learn at this step. Then your project idea here. We're moving into, again, favorite movies or whatever you used in the last one. But here, what your goal is, now you're gonna build your own API. So it's going to be based off data that you build. You put into your, your NoSQL database, you store some data there. And I would highly recommend for each movie or maybe it's a Pokemon or it's a book, like store some kind of image of that. Maybe it's the cover of the movie. Maybe it's a, like, I don't know, some kind of poster or the photo of a Pokemon or the photo of your author if you're working with books, whatever it is. But store an image of that in cloud storage, right? And then in your database for the item of the movie, have the link of the, the the URL of the image that's in cloud storage as as the, so you'll have like, um, like an item will be movie and then movie image and then the value will be the URL, right? 
and then create a function that's get movies and that's going to return json all the uh oh, i put quotes i'll have to update this all the movies information into your uh returns it to the client right and then make sure it returns that url for the movie cover or again whatever you plug in here and then get movies by year and this is going to return again a json list but only of movies that were released in that year that's provided by the client so the client will go to your api and it'll be like slash get movies by year and then it'll either either be a parameter or it can be part of the uh, create string or part of like the body depends on how you want to work and you'll understand what this is the more you work with these things right now this is what I consider the basics for this project, but I do have a little extra credit here that I think would be crucial for you to get hands on just because of how just popular and explosive and, and uh, sort of buzzwordy AI is at the moment. But I have this extra credit section here for you. So create a function that's get movie summary where the client will call the get movie summary and then provide a name of the movie. Uh, or it could be an ID, however you depend, you want to make, uh, structure that. But it's going to return a summary that is generated by AI. So go find a cloud API, AI API that you can uh, have it generate a movie summary based off the title of the movie and then other data that you could potentially provide it and then return that summary via your API. I think that would be pretty neat. So this is the absolute basics. From here, you are pretty much in a good position to start applying the things and go go apply now i mentioned devops practices all projects again should have these things here so you'll have repos and at this point you'll have like three projects in your github right each one will have a readme each one will have version control and then cicd and infrastructure as code makes sense more so for the api project and then the cloud services project so keep that in mind now extra credit in this phase here blog posts maybe you can make a video you share it to socials share it to the Learn the Cloud Discord. Earlier today, someone asked me like, hey, I have a some code. I was wondering if I could get some feedback on it. And I told them, hey, you have it on GitHub, just you know, uh, create a new branch, open a PR, and then we can be able to provide feedback there. And they did that. And then I went through all their code today and provided them feedback comments. And now they can actually go through and work on that uh, GitHub and that code in a way that you would actually do that in a professional setting. This is actually how these things are done in, in, in roles. PRs are open, code reviews are done, and changes are requested, and that back and forth. But you can get this experience now. So that's why I recommend using Learn to Cloud Discord. There will be a, a link in the description. If you go to tech any tech meetups, maybe display, show off your, you know, do a lightning talk, show off your project, and then maybe even open it up for open source projects uh, maintenance, potentially. Again, this is extra credit, but definitely, like, I think definitely do at least these four here. All right. So now let's talk about leveling up. I personally love programming. I can have my side projects not really depend on anybody. And I've added this level up section in case you want to be able to kind of just build whatever you want. So in your basics, I've added object oriented programming, depending on the language. This is something that you might have to do uh, in that first step. Um, but definitely something if you want to level up, you should you should look into. Basic unit testing. Testing your code is very, very important. I was hesitant to add this at the beginning, but just because I wanted to keep it as lean as possible in order for you to hit the ground running and start applying for roles, I've added it to here. But honestly, I think I'm probably going to move this to extra credit instead. Basic algorithms. I've been hearing more cloud roles asking for like data structures and algorithms questions. So keep this in mind recursion, and microservices architecture. Uh, pro your own personal projects, you can create them with microservices. I'm more of a fan of serverless, but these are things that, you know, microservices, containers, messaging uh, that do get asked. It's more so for uh, higher level roles, uh, I guess with more experience or potentially even like DevOps focus roles in terms of like containers and orchestration, but something to keep in mind. I personally don't dabble too much in it, more so serverless, but yeah, something to keep in mind in terms of leveling up. Okay, next, API section, build a full RESTful API. In the API section, in the in the just the bare minimum one, I recommended to you know create an API, but there's no like uh, deleting, there's no adding in your API. 
uh, there's just really just displaying and some querying. So building a RESTful API will have all those CRUD function, uh, functionality. Uh, so I think it's important to also have that as a skill there. And then obviously with building an, uh, an actual RESTful API, an actual in-production API, rate limiting, caching strategies, async programming in your API calls are all things that you need to keep in mind. And authentication authorization with APIs, maybe you want to make uh, that people can only access your API with a API key or something like that. This is the skill for that. In the cloud services data, I added the transform data with cloud AI services. Um, just level it up here. I did add it as extra credit, which we spoke through a little bit, but here's just, there's tons of other things. Like maybe you can have the summary be generated like an audio uh, MP4 that people can download instead, something like that, right? Modeling data, NoSQL database. You're gonna do a little bit about in this in the cloud services project, uh, but here diving deeper, fully understanding the difference between stuff like well, when would you use NoSQL versus a tr like a relational database? Um, yeah, creating different types of data, different databases for different uh, data, like different collections in your database for your different data. Um, and stuff like that, I think is important. Embedding information within, yeah, there's so much yeah, you can do here. Look into that. Auto scaling, low balancing, important concepts for you to definitely understand at all levels, but actually getting hands on with it is like different, right? It's kind of hard when you don't have traffic. So definitely share your projects. Again, share it in the Discord. You can get some um, traffic there. Key vault integration, saving your passwords, any secrets into. And Azure is called Keyvault. I don't know what it's called in other services or in other platforms, but all of them have it. It's just better to save it instead of using like uh, str like connection strings, um, in, in and uh, like uh, yeah, like a local settings.json file for your secrets. It's better to use something like Keyvault, all right? And then messaging. If you're using microservices, if you have different services that need to communicate with each other, messaging will be something important for you to take a look at. So things like events, things like queues something to dive deeper into. I've added a databases section here. So understanding SQL queries, select, uh, insert, delete, uh, select, insert, update, and delete, which I mentioned in the RESTful API. These are things we're only, we would only really use select. Uh, yeah, really just select in the basics, uh, in the, yeah, I guess the bare minimum version, but here really diving into all these and then understanding data models and relationships. Again, diving deeper into this, uh, CRUD operations with code, so learning how to delete, uh, select, insert, update. I guess it should be create, read, update, uh, and delete uh, your SQL or your data with code, I think is important too. And then with databases optimizing things like indexing and querying, transactions and concurrency, concurrency control, uh, and then for the database infrastructure itself, scaling and replication strategies, something to look into. And finally, when it comes to the DevOps area, containerize your application uh, orchestration, and then you can add tests to your CI, CD, which are things I feel like will level up all of your projects. Containerization, since you're using a serverless API, isn't necessary, but maybe you turn your API into actually, yeah, you have something different for your storage, and you have something different for your API, and then you can containerize. Uh, orchestration is kind of hard to get hands on, unless you have like a bunch of different uh, uh, services, but at the minimum for this uh, leveling up containerize and then add tests to your CI CD. I had mentioned adding tests in the basics. So these tests, make sure the tests are actually part of your pipeline. So when you push code, they run through tests before they're actually um, merged into anything. All right. And that's kind of it for this video. Uh, I will have, again, the link to this diagram available, or you can just watch this video, pause, take screenshots, whatever it is. It'll be in the description. And yeah, let me know what projects you're working on. Hopefully this was helpful. And I'll see you in the next video.